and set unto him every man at the beginning to set forth good wine and when many well drunk then that which is worse but thou has kept the good wine until now they're having a marriage feast the Lord Jesus Christ is attending the marriage feast and by the way let me say this marriage is honorable in the sight of God I don't think God's pleased with this junk that's taking place this day and time I saw one of those talk shows one morning Donahue I believe it was they had five women on there all five of them been married five times and now then there's living with somebody and the spokesman of the group made a statement and said the reason there's living with somebody to find out if they were compatible <laughs> my soul honey if you hadn't found one by the time you get to the fifth one I believe I'd just throw the towel in and quit amen yes sir but here the Lord Jesus is attending the marriage supper and all of a sudden they come running in and they say they're out of wine and now then Jesus performs the first miracle that he performed after he began his public ministry that is he turned water in the wine uh, when he did so I tell you my friends they buried into the governor of the feast he tasted of it and he turned to the young bridegroom and he said hey you've done differently he said every man that the first puts forth his best wine or his worst wine but he keeps the uh, best until uh, worst until last gives his best first and worst until last but he said you've done differently wait a minute he hadn't done a thing <laughs> In fact, he didn't have enough to go around a second time. Is that right? And now Jesus performs that miracle. I love to read of the miracles of the miracle-working Son of God. Oh, it's thrilling, my friends, when you read about those things. Uh, I like to see how that he opened the eyes of the blind, how that he raised the dead, fed the multitude. You know why and how he could do it? He is all man and he's all God. Amen. Uh, Boy, down there, when he got those few loaves of bread and a few fish and fed a multitude, he was hungry. He ate like everybody else. Uh, he performed a miracle. He turned, my friends, that in to enough food to feed everybody and had baskets left over. Yes, sir. And, and the reason he could do it was uh, because he was hungry and he was God. He performed a miracle. I see him in that old ship and the lightnings are flashing, the waters are raging and, and uh, the disciples go to screaming, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Uh, and the Lord Jesus performs a miracle. He was man enough to go to sleep, but he was God enough to say to the winds, uh, uh, go home. Uh, boy, the winds took their tails and went to the house. The lightning didn't flash anymore. The waters laid down at his feet. Listen to me. This is the miracle working Son of God. I like to read about the miracles that he performed. I tell you, friends, I like to read how uh, that God can take nothing, make something out of it. How that God uh, can perform all of this. And so we find as he's attending that marriage supper, he turns the water into wine. The governor of the feast tasted it up and said, Men give their best first to keep the worst to life, but you've done differently. You've kept the best until last. Uh, and that's what I want to preach on uh, for a little bit. Uh, the best uh, is to come at last. Amen. The best. God's keeping the best uh, until last. Uh, now, I don't somebody gives the worst right now. Yes, he does. The devil, he gives his worst always. Uh, you look on the billboard, there's a picture of a beautiful co-ed. Uh, she's got enough paint on her face if you used to kiss her. You'd get the painter's colic. Uh, I tell you, she looks like a clown out of Barlam Bailey Circus. Uh, and she'll have a little glass of Bud Weiser in her hand. I got news for you, Bud. Hey, you'll be a lot wiser if you don't fool with it. Amen. Is that right? And I tell you, friends, the devil gives his uh, best first. He said, live it up. Everybody's indulging uh, in alcoholic beverages. Uh, everybody's drinking. Everybody's consuming booze. Uh, but the devil never shows you the terrible end of it. He never shows a man dying on the highway in a terrible car wreck. Uh, he never shows you families being killed. Uh, he never shows you little boys and girls uh, that's placed in orphan homes uh, uh, because they didn't have milk, butter, and eggs uh, to feed on uh, and clothes to cover their body and shoes to go on their feet. The devil is shrewd. Uh, he never shows you that. He just gives his best first and the worst uh, comes last. Uh, I tell you, the devil's shrewd. Uh, this world's sex crazy. Uh, they can't sell hog feed no more without putting a picture of a naked woman in front of the hog feed bag. Uh, is that right? 
Yeah, I tell you, pick up the newspaper, suggestive pictures, uh, suggestive language of every kind. It's found in the newspapers and in the periodics that come to your home and on the televisions. Uh, they just outright cuss. Uh, hey, the devil gives his best first, uh, but the worst comes last. Uh, but I'm not going to deal with that this morning. I want to talk to my friends about somebody that gives the best uh, uh, first, bless God, and keeps the best for the middle and keeps the best for the last. Uh, he ain't got nothing but good things. Amen. Uh, in creation. In creation, God kept the best until last. Uh, boy, I see my Heavenly Father uh, in the book of Genesis saying, Let us make. Uh, who was he talking to? He's talking to the Holy Ghost uh, and talking to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Let us make. Uh, I want to tell you, they walked out on the edge of nothing uh, and flung into space everything you see and the things you can't see. Hung out the big dip from the little dipper and put the Milky Way out there to dip out of. Yes, sir. I tell you, made the fowls of the air, the beasts of the fields, uh, the fishes of the sea. But the crowning act of God uh, was when he made a man uh, and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life and he becomes a living soul. Uh, did you read the other day where they tried to take a gizzard or something or other out of a monkey and put in a man? And they, and, oh, they're so disturbed. Uh, they said it wouldn't work. Uh, I've never been to a sinus school. Uh, I don't know anything about medicine. Uh, I don't know anything about operations. All I got is a butcher knife. And you wouldn't want me working on you with that thing. No, sir. But I tell you, I got sense enough to know, uh, my friends, that there are four kinds of flesh uh, on the face of this earth. There's the flesh of the fowls of the air. There's the flesh of the fish of the sea. There's the flesh of the beast of the fields. Uh, and there's man flesh. Uh, you cannot take the monkey's flesh and mix it with the man's flesh. Uh, you can't take, my friends, the uh, uh, flesh of a bird uh, and mix it up with a fish. It don't work that way. Uh, and God declares that in his blessed word. I tell you, the crowning act of God was when he made a man. Uh, I never read where God uh, gave his only begotten son where a horse uh, can get born again. I never read where God uh, uh, gave his son to die that a, a rooster could be saved. Uh, but praise God, I did read uh, where God so loved a man uh, that he gave his only begotten son to die that a poor old sinner could be saved by the grace of God Almighty. Uh, I tell you, like what the Burns is of the singing of the night, justice called, but mercy answered. Uh, Lord, I got one day when I sink it in despair, he stepped on the scene. Uh, so in creation, God uh, keeps the best until last. Uh, in revelation, God keeps the best until last. Uh, now, the Old Testament characters, uh, they didn't understand what you and I know about the church. In fact, Paul the Apostle says uh, that it was a mystery to them. They didn't understand. I want to tell you, my friends, uh, the church is shown forth in the Old Testament. The Lord Jesus is found in the Old Testament uh, all the way through. Uh, listen to his great high priestly prayer. He said, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Uh, oh, I like what God said. Uh, I said, Where was you? Where was you, Job, uh, when I uh, framed this whole thing? When I put the oceans out there, when I made the mountains, uh, amen to God. Where's you, Job? Uh, hey, Jesus was there. In the book of Proverbs, he said, I was daily his delight, rejoicing always uh, before him. Uh, I like that, don't you? Uh, why? Because he's the only begotten son of God. Uh, but God shows Christ uh, in the Old Testament. Let me give you a couple of illustrations. Uh, Abraham is a type of God the Father. Isaac is a type of the Son. And Eliezer, the elder servant, and he calls him the elder servant, is a type of the Holy Ghost of God. One day Abraham said to Eliezer, the elder servant, I want you to go and get a bride for my son Isaac. Uh, and so the Bible said he packed up the camels. Uh, these are the kind you ride, not the kind you carry. Uh, these are the kind that had a hump on them, and not the kind that puts a hump on you. Amen. He st started out to find a bride for Isaac. Uh, now, if you read that story, uh, I used to think in my childish thinking, he must have went down the road 10 or 15 miles. Uh, but did you know he took a 500-mile journey? And he put the fleece out, the girl that draws water for me and for my camels. Uh, 
That'll be the girl that I'll invite to go and marry my master's son. Uh, boy, he gets over that at a certain place. Here comes a beautiful little girl up in the name of Rachel, and, or I mean Rebecca, and she said to old Eliezer, uh, let me draw water for you and your camels. Uh, he had ten camels with him. And I looked up the other day, did you know one camel will hold about 50 gallons of water? I tell you what you do. Go down here, we've got them lemonade barrels. They hold 55 gallons. You'll stand there for at least 10 to 15 minutes with a hose uh, filling up one of those barrels. Uh, now, there's 10 of those camels. Uh, and she watered all the camels, uh, watered all the servants that was with old Eliezer, watered him. And then she, uh, he said to her, would you go marry my master's son? She said, I certainly will. <laughs> hey, who would want to marry somebody you'd never see? Now, you might be hurting, buddy, but I would have got that bad off. I'll tell you that right now. I never had but one blind date in my life, uh, and I wished I was blind when I got there. <laughs> uh, one woman comes strutting up the other day and said, I'll tell you right now, you're not Mr. America. Well, I said, I may not be, but that didn't keep me wanting to marry Miss America. Amen. You've got to look across the table at somebody for 50 years. Bless God, you wish you'd looked them over, huh? Now there's one thing so in this whole story. She is hankering to get married. It was leap year or God was in it. <laughs> Amen. Boy, when you fall in love, you go crazy anyhow, don't you, huh? I tell you, when I fell in love, uh, I was walking down the uh, street and somebody would speak to me and I'd walk another half a block before it even dawned on me and anybody spoke to me. I was going to Carson Newman College. I looked back. I looked out across the campus. Yonder come a girl walking across the campus and I said to an old boy playing football, I said, you know that girl yonder? He said, that's Doc Frost. Uh, I said, I believe I need frostbitten. Amen. <laughs> I said, yonder comes my wife. Listen to this now. I said, yonder comes my wife. Uh, and uh, I said, introduce me to that girl. She come over that boy and the closer she got. I tell you, it felt like my toenails rolled up. My hair got curly. Goose pimples jumped out all over me. Cold chills uh, got all over me. And come to find out my Dixie cup was leaking. But it out. <laughs> hey, listen, buddy. I want to tell you I was in love. Uh, I had fell in love. Uh, I'll never forget that first furlough I got home from Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I got to Sevierville, Tennessee. I done lost about 15 or 20 pounds uh, trying to keep my trousers up. And it's all wrinkled up right in that old car. I tried to straighten that army camp up a little bit. And about that time, uh, at, a, at a big old rock house there on, on Main Street in Sevierville, the door flew open. The screen went back against the wall. A young girl about 20 years old come a-flying out, jumped four steps, uh, hit the sidewalk of doing 90, and I met her doing 110. Amen! Uh, buddy, I was in love. Uh, how many of, you, uh, many of you remember that occasion, huh? Well, that's the reason some of you bachelors and old maids, bless God. Hey, if you ever fall in love, something will happen to you as sure as you live in. All right, he brings this girl back, and the Bible tells us, my friends, how that a wedding takes place. Uh, now, you watch Jesus in the Old Testament. Jacob had a lot of sons, uh, a lot of sons. Uh, God's got a lot of sons. That's right. The Bible said God made this world the sons of God shouted for joy. The Bible tells they came to his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Uh, the Bible said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. But God never had but one only begotten son, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, all right, watch it now. We find that Jacob had a beloved son. His name was Joseph. Uh, Joseph came to his own, they didn't like him. What did they do? They cast him into the pit of death. What happened? He went away to a far country, down to Egypt. What happened then? He took a Gentile bride and became the breadwinner for his brethren back home. Uh, are you getting that picture? I want to tell you, God sent his only begotten son. They came to his own. What did they do? They didn't like him. They cast him into the pit of death like they did Joseph. He went away to a far country. Where? To heaven. What's he doing right now? taking a Gentile pride. <laughs> Amen. And then one of these mornings, listen, he's the breadwinner for his brethren back here. He said, I'm the bread of life. You eat of this bread that I am, you'll never hunger again. You drink of this water that I am, you'll never thirst again. He's coming back for his own. Uh, 
Now God shows us uh, in Revelation the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so one day he came. Now notice when he came in the life of Jesus, God keeps the best uh, until last. When Jesus came, he's despised. He is hated from the moment that he got here. The devil tried to keep... Are y'all listening to me? The devil tried to keep him from getting here. That's right. They want nothing to do with it. And they tried to kill all the babies. All the babies under two years old. Old Pharaoh put out a decree. Kill every one of them. Trying to get rid of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what happened? God moved on old Joseph's heart to dream one night. And said you take Mary and Jesus. And you go down to the land of Egypt. Down to the devil's stomping grounds. And while he's up here reminding somebody else's business. God said I'll take care of you down there. So he goes down. Years passes by and one day, watch this, I can see the devil uh, walking, strolling down the banks of the Jordan River and all of a sudden he looks and hey, amen to God, yonder is old John the Baptist, not John the Methodist, not John the Catholic, not John the Charismatic, not John the Pentecostal, but John the Baptist, amen. Say, well, you be if you want the Baptist to be ashamed of myself. All right. Here's old John the Baptist. In his arms uh, is the Son of God. Uh, boy, I want to tell you, old John baptized God's darling baby boy. And when Jesus come up out of the water, if you don't think the Trinity wasn't uh, pleased with it, you read it. The Bible said the Holy Ghost in the form of a dove uh, fluttered over the scene. Uh, and then the clouds rolled back and the eternal voice of God. I mean the one that spoke in existence. Uh, all the flower gardens. Uh, all the silver streams. Uh, the one that put out all the trees. Uh, laid the foundation of this earth. The eternal voice of God said, This uh, is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Glory to God. God's keeping the best until last in the life of Christ. They tried to stone him to death. They tried to get rid of him. He kept saying, my hour's not come, my time's not come, it's not yet time. But then one day he said, it's now time for the Son of Man to be offered up. They drove the nails in his hands, in his feet. They beat him with the cat of nine tails. They took my friend's uh, uh, their hands and smote him, jerked the beard from his face, crowned him with a crown of thorns, and said, and the devil, hey, listen, I can see the devil come strutting by, and that no doubt buzzard said, you saved others, why don't you save yourself? Uh, I got you, Jesus, I didn't come to save myself. I came to be lifted up. And they're going to be glad to stand in the 20th century at the old camp meeting in Greer, South Carolina and say on a hill far away stood the old rugged cross. Uh, praise God. Here was God's darling son. They plunged the spear in his side. The water and the blood gushes out. Jesus gave up the ghost, went in the heart of the earth, preached unto those as in captivity. Paradise was delivered. Boy, I want to tell you, when his blood was shed, he bowed his head and went home. Listen to me. Bless God, I believe old Abraham rolled over on the cold death couch, nudged old Sarah and said, Get up, honey. It's home going time. I believe old David got up and said, I told you, he wouldn't leave my soul in Sheol. I believe old Adam nudged old Eve and said, Honey, it's resurrection morning. Thank God. And the Bible said, Many of those Old Testament saints were seen on the streets of Jerusalem walking around in a shaking hands. Uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if old Zacchaeus wasn't there. <laughs> Woo! Lord, I got the lamb feather. God kept the best in the life of the Lord Jesus. He said, what do you mean? When he comes the next time, he's not coming like he did the first time. First time he came alone, the next time He'll come with 10,000 of his saints. The first time he came, he went to a cross. The next time he comes, he'll go to the throne of David. Amen to God. The first time they rejected him, this time they're going to hail him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is a poor man. That's right. He, my friends, uh, was born in a barred manger. He was crucified on a barred cross. Crossed the waters in a barred boat. Crucified on a barred cross. And buried in a barred tomb. But I got news for you. The next time he comes. Uh, bless God he's not going to be poor. 
Amen to God. They're going to hail him. Chief of chiefs. King of kings. Lord of lords. He's not going to borrow a little old mule out of here somewhere. Thank God he's been horse trading. <laughs> Got him a nice stallion to ride on. Amen. Hey, you say you're crazy. You come here me. I didn't come here you, buddy. That's going to tell you one thing right now. Listen, listen. He died in the hot, blistering sun. But oh, the next time. I tell you, you won't have servants about waving and fanning like he did old David when he's a dying. No, sir. I tell you, there'll be no more dying. No graveyards on the hilltops of glory. Then let me give you this. I tell you, thank God the best is yet to come in my friends, the believers experience I tell you what, I, I, I don't like to talk about it like I used to I don't know why I reckon you, you, as a young preacher you thought you was trying to build up the work of the Lord but the older I get the more ashamed I am of my past I'm ashamed of sins that I committed I'm ashamed of things that I've done in life I really am folks and uh, Paul said when I do good evil is ever present and I, I listen, I really have a desire. I'm honest before God. I really have a desire down inside to live right. Amen. But boy, sometimes the devil gives me under fit that you wouldn't imagine. You couldn't even think how the devil would give somebody a fit. And I tell you what, I never forget that night or that day we played Oak Ridge, Tennessee for championship ball. I was the first string pitcher at our school. I pitched the no hitter up to the seventh inning. We had them two to nothing, and uh, uh, we got two outs, and all of a sudden I went wild. Couldn't even hit the catcher, backstop hardly. I walked three men, two outs, all I got to do is get one man out, and then the inning will be over. About that time they announced that dangerous Dan Magoon was coming up to bat. Boy, he is known to limb over center field fence. About that time the coach come out took me out of the game. Put another fella in. First ball he threw, dangerous Dan. Laid it over center field fence. And they beat us four to two. I, I, never, I almost went berserk. I walked in front of the grandstand. I cussed everybody in the, in, the, in the stands. I cussed my fellow ball players. I cussed my coach. Uh, I just went crazy. I went to town. Knoxville, Tennessee had been dry since Prohibition days. There's more liquor there. And it was at uh, wherever they make it. I mean, buddy, that you thought you'd buy liquor anywhere. I went and got me a fifth of liquor. I went to Joe McDonald's pool hall. I went back to the restroom, drunk all of it. I drank it, knocked me out. I was laying on the restroom floor. Laid there from about 2 o'clock that evening until 6 that night. Some fellas left the pool hall to go home. When they went down a big flight of steps, there's two guys on the street handing out tracts and inviting people to an old-fashioned revival. They said to those guys, trying to get them off of their back, why don't you go up there that pool hall? Said old Red Kelly's up there. Said he's dog drunk. Go up there and take him. He needs to get saved. So they come up and they found me. They took me out in the pool hall. It looked like a church pew. They set me down on that thing. Got uh, some towels. Put in the cold water fountain. Trying to sober me up. Put it on my head. Then they took me downstairs to Crystal Hamburger Place. Bought me tomato juice. Trying to sober me up. And uh, then they put me in the car. Stuck my head out the window. Went around the block. Trying to sober me up. Finally, I began to come around a little bit, and they said to me, Red, go to revival. I said, I can't do it. Man, I won't go, go to revival. I gave every excuse I could think of. And then, boy, the big one hit my head. I said, I got a date tonight. My girlfriend won't let me. They said, you go, she'd let you. I said, yeah, boy. I knew she was bad off as I was. I said, yeah, I'll go. They said, let's go call her. They got back up that pool hall, put me on the extension line, called up and said, it's okay. If Red goes to revival, she said, Lord have mercy. If he's going to revival, take him on. Boy, I'm sunk now. I got in that car. I figured he's going to a little old church house somewhere. And I informed them. I said, now listen, they start that invitation stuff. I'm going to get up and go out in the yard and smoke me a lucky camel field. That's what I'm going to do. We got to the place where there's preaching and listen to this. It was the University of Tennessee Auditorium. 5,000 had already gathered for the meeting. They got me out, one got on one side, one the other, me so loop legged I couldn't walk. And when we got to the door, the usher said, 
you'll have to take him, and he pointed at me, upstairs. I reckon that's where the drunks hung out. <laughs> so up the steps we went. I don't know what they preached about, sung about, not one bit of it. I went to sleep, it's hot. Went to sleep. But when the invitation started, God's Holy Ghost woke me up. That big 500 voice choir began to sing. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come in your heart. Lord, I never had no real peace. Mom and Daddy divorced us 10, put me off in an institution. I stayed there four years in a, in a well, just mounted almost a reform school, but they call it a military school. And the only time I'd ever come home was at summertime, stayed with my grandpa then. And Ma, I, I tell you, I, I, was, I was down on all of that. But to make a long story short, I tell you, an old boy slipped up, put his arm around my shoulders as a singing, and said, Red, where'd you go if you used to die tonight? I said, I'd go to hell, same place you're going. I knew he was an old hypocrite. He looked at me and cried, and he said, Red, you might go where? You might go to hell. He said, you won't go where I'm going. He said, I got saved night before last. <laughs> Well, I said, I'd go to hell. He said, you don't have to. He said, stick your foot out. God will meet you halfway. Now, I've been preaching 46 years. And I've never told anybody to stick your foot out and God meet them halfway. Never. But it sure worked on me. <laughs> I looked around and everybody had their head ducked. And I didn't know this then. I found this out later. Somebody stepped up to the evangelist and said, if you can get that red-headed boy on the balcony saved. He said, Daniel, tell me what happened this meeting. And he had that bite about their head. And he was all praying for me, and I didn't even know it. And I looked around, and that old boy said, Go on, let's stick your foot out. Got me chat. Well, I was standing right next to the aisle. And I thought, oh, to get him off my back. I'm going to stick my foot out. And I went like that. But, honey, when I did, the other ones were following it. <laughs> and out of there I came. I got downstairs. It looked like that aisle was a mile long. Walking wasn't fast enough. Next thing, I'm in a trot. That ain't fast enough. The next thing I'm in a dead run. And buddy, I slid in that altar like a ball player sliding in the hole. And I got born again. Hey, you ever get saved, a tomcat will know it. I tell you, when I walked out of there that night, it seemed like the trees clapped their hands and said, we're glad you're saved. Hey, man, it felt to me like God the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. All the blood-washed crowd that was already home leaned over the battlements of glory and said, we're glad you're saved. I got to the house. There wasn't nobody home. Mama and my two sisters had gone to the Moose Club to dance that night. And uh, so I, I sat around and waited on for a while. After a bit, they opened the door. Mama said, what world's wrong with you? I said, no, thanks. All right now. I said, everything's all right. I said, I got saved tonight. My mother and two sisters lit in. They said, you're drunk. Well, I said, I have been, but I ain't now. Of course, when I got saved. I didn't quit drinking. I just changed jugs. I'm drinking on a new wine. <laughs> yes, sir. My two sisters said, you're drunk. That's that old liquor talking. They went to fuss at me. I saw they just going to fuss. So I went in the back room, crawled in a little, I was a little fella then, didn't weigh about 200 pounds. I caught crawling in a little three-quarter size bed, but who could go to sleep when you just step from the bottom to the top? When God had just become your Father, Jesus the Savior, Holy Ghost, your Comforter, the New Jerusalem, the city, and heaven, the country. And God had written all over me, New Jerusalem bound, no layovers allowed, plain air ride. Amen. Boy, listen, I, I, I begin to think of things I heard preachers say. Walls of jasper, streets of gold, gates of pearl. One old Bible critic said, hey, where's their oyster big enough to make a pearl big enough to make a gate? <laughs> well, I said, that's not hard. He lives next door to that fish that swallowed Jonah, bless God. <laughs> hey, God's got it fixed up. He knows what's going on, don't he do it? Yes, he does. I tell you, my friends, that night, God kept the best until last. Now, let me give you this and I'm through.
God keeps the best until last in the Christian life, in the life that we live for God. Yes, sir. He, I mean, he keeps the best. He said, what are you talking about? Well, what's wrong with what God's doing for you right now? Now, you ain't fooling me. I was born during Depression times. We now find clothes to wear. Done good to get something to eat. We always had something to eat, but we done good. I, hey, a lot of people did. They was bankers standing on the street corner with a tie, a suit on, a hat, Selling apples, trying to get a little money to buy some coffee to go to the house. Now, hey, I, this, we don't know about hard times. A fellow taught me, he said, Brother Bill, what you used to watch when you were born on television? There wasn't any television. I mean, we go to town in the wagon, horses pulled. That's right, I'm not exaggerating. And uh, uh, people had gathered ginseng, trying to make living back in the mountains. You know, people wonder how a mountaineer lived, lived off corn patch. We eat the roast nears, put up corn, fed the stock, fed the hogs, cows, fed the dogs, and then this thing left, made a few squeezes. <laughs> Got a little change to operate on. That's the way we live. And hey, listen. Here you are dressed up, got good cars to drive, homes to live in. I got so tickled of that, I like to laugh at a woman's face. Said I'm so tired. Said I washed three loads of clothes today. She didn't walk as far as near them banisters over there. Put them in a wash machine, throw some powders in there, flip the switch, and that thing said, and she washed three loads of clothes. She only lived like my grandma. We carried water at halfway of them woods over on the spring at the bottom of the hill. Washed on a washboard. Didn't have lights. We'd sit on the porch and got almost dark and Papa would say, about bedtime. Get up before daylight. Go to school. Walk two miles. Catch school bus. Hey, what's wrong with what God's doing for us now? Oh, the Lord's been so good to me. I come to South Carolina, I had a little trailer, a little old lark car. That thing burned up. I didn't have a thing, nowhere to live. Old bro Brother Corn Satterfield come to me and said, I was praying, Brother Billy. God told me to give you a piece of land to build your house on. And ever since that day, God's prospered me. If you ever come to my house and you don't like what I got, don't blame me for it. God's people give it to me. Everything. Everything I got, God's people give to me. Put shoes on my feet, clothes on my body. Amen, how good he's been to me. And I praise him. Food on my table, God put it there. Amen. Oh, Lord, has you ever been good to me? I go to people's homes, they're so good to the preacher. Well, these women just outdo themselves, the preachers around Chicken, rolls, steaks. Boy, deer, I even like deer meat. Dear old fat bag. I've had them to just feed me and feed me. And, and here's what I've heard them say. Brother Billy, won't you have some more? Oh, I'd say I'm full up to my neck. <laughs> well, she said I had some strawberry shortcake. I said, that's what I say my neck for. Amen. <laughs> Now, Brother Billy, won't you eat some? No, no, but I will take some of that dessert. That dessert, boy, that just tops the meal off. It gives it that, uh, oof. She'd say, Brother Billy, uh, uh, here, let me get you a plate. And she'd start picking my plate up. And I've heard this a thousand times, I guess. Keep your fork. <laughs> boy, that woman said, keep your fork. I knew something better's on the way. Banana pudding. Nervous pudding, jello, strawberry shortcake, yeah. lemon pies, chocolate pies. Uh, what's that custard? Egg custard. Yeah, devil's food, angel food, any kind of food. Drag her out here. Watermelons. You like watermelons? Hey! 
What's wrong with what God is doing for you now? Not a thing. But you listen to this and I'm through. He's keeping the best until last. <laughs> Woo you say, what do you mean? There's no dying in heaven. 23 years ago, I buried a little boy. Saddest day that ever come my way. I thought I'd never enjoy hearing the birds sing. I'd never enjoy springtime no more. But the years has passed. You know what God's done in my heart? Oh, wait. I haven't forgotten that little feller. No, I haven't forgot him. But one glad morning, thank God. I believe a young man will come walking out. Take me by the hand and hug my neck. And say, Dad, Dad I've been waiting on you. <laughs> you know what we're going to do? We're going to stroll all over heaven one of these mornings. Thank God, thank God. God's keeping the best until last. There's been heartaches and sorrow. I'd be a fool to sit here and tell you that I haven't had troubles in my life. But you know what? It's all for my good. It's for my good. God was whetting me up. And God knows how to whet you up, my friend. Yes, He does. You say, well, I'm having a rough time. Hang in there. Better days are ahead. The best is yet to come.